In a major report yesterday by the United Nations top climate science body, climate change is widespread, rapid and intensifying with some effects like sea level rise now irreversible over hundreds of years. So to limit this accelerated pace, deep cuts in greenhouse gas emissions must be made in the coming decades. Even then, the intergovernment the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change said the most severe of cuts is unlikely to prevent global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial temperatures. Another key conclusion from the report, whether extremes like heat waves, cyclones and droughts are becoming more common. Sea levels are sure to keep rising for hundreds or thousands of years. Even if global warming were halted at 1.5 degrees, the average sea level would still rise about 2 to 3 meters, maybe more. And the world will likely use up its carbon budget in about a decade. While the harshest impacts of climate change have been elsewhere so far, the report indicates that Singapore must brace itself for tougher times ahead. ST's climate change editor tells us what it means for our little island in the immediate and midterm. Of course, Singapore's quite a small place, so um, the, the broader models they looked at couldn't define Singapore specifically, but generally in the tropics, in the short term, uh, you know, we'll see kind of similar sort of weather that we're getting now to you know, warmer weather, you know, bursts of extreme or heavy rain, followed by drier periods. M sort of medium to longer term, the, the pattern will be, certainly in the next few decades, is hotter weather, generally, again, longer sort of periods between rain or, or longer dry periods, uh, and increasingly heavy sort of bursts of rain when they do fall. Now, that, of course, is um, the heat is certainly exacerbated by what's called the, the urban heat island effect, which, of course, is the heat both generated by um, buildings and cars and, you know, um, but also trapped by buildings and, and roads. So the overall uh, temperature increase in Singapore to date uh, is a bit higher than the global average. So it's about 1.8 degrees. And part of that is due to uh, heat being trapped by buildings and generated by buildings, industry and transport. So Singapore is already thinking deeply about, you know, tackling heat, uh, increasing heat in the future. So it wants buildings to be a lot more efficient in the energy that they use, but also the energy or the heat that they you know, they generate. So air conditioning units for a big source of heat. So um, the government's sort of mandating those to be much more efficient, you know, the chillers, for example. Um, buildings also need to um, uh, use energy inside more wisely, so lighting. The other thing, too, is, of course, um, you know, roads are a big uh, source of heat because they, it's black and they absorb heat during the day and of course they radiate the heat at night so one way is to increase shading for paths and along roads so the government of course has, has a large tree planting campaign going forward um, electrification of transport will also cut heat and emissions and improve air quality um, from uh, you know transport so we're gradually phasing out internal combustion engines from cars trucks buses and so forth uh, will be a big plus uh, on many in many ways uh, but also you know phasing out fossil fuel use from electricity generation industry uh, will also reduce again air pollution but also heat generated uh, by you know big factories power stations and so forth